100 years of the Walt Disney Company, and it has come down to this. A celebration of animation. Wish is the new movie that Bob Iger wishes would do well at the box office and clean out that bad taste he has in his mouth with the marbles. This is a Bob Iger movie approved under Bob Iger back in 2018-2019 as part of his celebration. It has been guided and crafted under his tutelage. So how does Wish fare? Well, it's time to find out right now with a review you can trust. Hello folks, welcome back to the WDW Pro channel where we endeavor to explain entertainment, keep you ahead of the culture curve. We love doing so and we are appreciative each time you join us. Yes, I know that there is big news about Star Wars and Dave Filoni and yes, we previewed this yesterday on the live stream telling you all that there would be indeed Star Wars news coming out soon. We had a feeling that this would be breaking either today or tomorrow. And because of that, yes, tomorrow we do have planned coverage of the Dave Filoni news, as well as, we believe, information that is pertinent and not yet public. We'll be talking about it all. Don't miss it at 10.30 a.m. But for now, we need to get into this review of Wish. I have seen it. I have gone to a very large theater in a metro area and said theater, the very first viewing of that movie, that theater was empty. But this is the review I have after having enjoyed a private screening that I did not pay for. Well, I paid for the ticket, but I didn't pay for the private side of it. But here is my review. The Walt Disney Company is celebrating its 100th anniversary with a new animated film. While it features a number of cameos, winks, and nods, it is ultimately a shadow of the company's former glory. It is therefore a reminder that what the company once was is only something that modern Disney might aspire to be if it has recognized the plight it is in. Until now, it has not. Folks, we're going to get into spoilers now, so uh, if you don't want to know what's in the movie, don't keep listening, but here we go. Wish is a movie that dreams of being something far more than it can be. That's not to say that it is an awful or painful film to watch. In reality, the film is, at its heart, an anti-authoritarian, anti-socialist, and anti-communist display that teaches small children they should follow their passions. The passions in this film are referred to as wishes for the convenience of tying into the Disneyisms necessary for merchandising. You wish upon a star, as popularized by Walt Disney and Pinocchio, and your wishes just might come true. Except in this movie, wishes really refer to what you would like to be in the future. There are a few nods to frivolous wishes, but these are not genie in a lamp style requests from a deity, and these are not well defined at all in the story, folks. Please take note of that. We don't really understand these wishes. We don't really understand why they glow and come out of people's hearts. We don't understand why the sorcerer wants them. None of that is explained because all of that would take us into something probably more meaningful and thus less likely to get play in places like China. Let's continue with the review. In order to maintain peace and stability in their lives, the town folk in this movie all acquiesce to having their king take their most fervent dreams and hold them hostage. A few are granted these dreams, but the most extravagant hopes are seemingly never permitted. And also, that's never really explained. The bad guy is bad because he's bad, darn it. Why this is the case is not explicitly said in the movie. Neither are we given any real reason for understanding why the king, who is a magical sorcerer, would contrive such an odd system. All of that would make the movie far more meaningful, but probably is too great a task for the writers here. The feelings of ill-defined personal empowerment and the magic of squeaky, almost plushy stars with streams of pixie dust flying across the screen, are all in service of making you feel that Disney nostalgia. Going any further might take the movie into a path of real statement or intuition. And frankly, that's just too dangerous for a studio making sure whatever they produce will be allowed in China. I also found this particularly interesting, folks, is that there are times when the characters respond in ways that don't seem natural until you figure out, well, the plot needed to go here, and thus they needed to get angry at this point and not ask a deeper question. They needed to not say, oh, well, I've been asked this many times before, all because, of course, the service of the plot. Still, one might think that Wish would be a great piece of pro-Western messaging if it were released in North Korea. Ultimately, the movie is about the power of following your dreams. Doing so according to the film's ethic is enough to overthrow authoritarian dictators. While I am mostly supportive of the core message of the film, even if it is watered down to the point of corporate sloganisms, what I can't support is the packaging of the story. While the message would surely be a great of great importance in less liberty nations, 
The overall animation feels like it came from a China or a North Korea. The beautiful cinematography and artistry of Disney past is utterly missing here. Characters are bland, boring, and ugly in design. Character personalities are totally forgettable, as are their names. The animation style here is robotic, as if it was created by artificial intelligence. Keystrokes and animation exist as a way to get a limb or a facial expression to that point with rigidity in between. This leaves the film looking more like a low-budget television show for small children. Instead, it is a $200 million Disney celebration of 100 years of animated excellence. And I have to say, folks, that the animation here is starkly terrible. And I mean that. This is not up to par with any studio in the modern era and what they have been doing. This does not come close to looking uh, as nice as something like even Minions or The Secret Life of Pets. And there are very few scenes which are vibrant in the least. You can do watercolors. It doesn't mean it has to be ugly. The songs, likewise, are quite forgettable. The villain gets two songs here, one of which is serviceable. Asha, the lead, gets an anthem song that might have some kids listening to it. No song in the soundtrack, however, is better than the worst song in Moana, Tangled, or Encanto. And during the songs, it's as if the director thought the film was being made on stage. Characters act as if they're on Broadway. Remember during Simba's song about being king, how the movie went to all sorts of incredible animated sequences? Remember how the genie teaches Aladdin he has a friend? with zany visuals that amaze? Now imagine if those songs had been sung with characters standing in place and orbs of light flowing around them instead for two straight minutes. And it is, folks. It, it feels, it's so bizarre. They don't use the tools that animation gives them whatsoever. One, the characters can't bend and move like cartoons. They are stuck to being animated as if they are absolutely real, which gives this movie a, a, a feeling of just, I don't know, a weight that it doesn't need. And then on top of that, well, they act as if what must be displayed on stage is what they have on stage, but there's no stage. You can do anything with animation. Do it. Go crazy. They don't. And this is why I cannot endorse this film as anything more than Disney propaganda that they likely believe was nostalgia or homage. Maybe if I thought they had purposefully made a statement about the evils of communism, I might find it all a bit more impressive that I think they actually tried to create an activist revolution film in support of the matriarchy, and then somehow ended up here instead leaves me feeling hollow as I walk out. And if you're wondering how in the world the matriarchy comes into being with this film, just watch and see the bizarre queen character suddenly turn on her husband and doom him to a dungeon in the closet. That's the closest thing that Disney has ever attempted for displaying an ugly divorce in animation. But was what was likely intended to be a poignant moment with the queen is left feeling rushed, the same as many other plot points in the film, because they don't have enough time to naturally evolve in the script. we It's a very strange movie, and I don't know why they feel rushed, but they feel rushed, and they don't spend time to have characters develop what their arc is. They just immediately jolt into the next phase of their development without the transition. It feels so odd. But at least there's a star that squeaks, a goat that talks in a humorous way, a few seconds of smile-inducing chicken dancing, and a core message that I can't disagree with. I just wonder if they ever intended to write it. For as much as the central ethic here is diluted but right, the lack of emphasis on it makes it feel that it was never the intended moral of the story. Or maybe that's just what happens when a film goes through enough corporate boardrooms. In the end, it was always about the squeaky star and the talking goat after all. And folks, the, the way this movie ends is that the queen takes charge of the kingdom and the king is evil. And the young lady of color is the one who led a diverse group to overthrow the white evil queen, or white evil king, sorry. That's the way the movie ends. And that's the emphasis, despite the message. And that's why I think that this is a movie which was originally intended to be an activist matriarchal kind of message for children. But I think it's gone through so many corporate boardrooms and the heart of Walt Disney himself was that you wish upon a star and that, that ignites the individualism inside of you and that individualism is necessary to drive forth entrepreneurial spirits, which is, well, deeply rooted in Americana. And I don't think this film or its writers understand that. And so trying to take what Walt himself dreamed up so many years ago results in a message that I don't think they probably agree with, but I could be wrong. And if I am, I apologize. If they actually intended this, then good for them. It's just the way it ends. It feels like they didn't understand what those wishes were all about in the first place.
Those wishes are about the divine value of the individual. That's the meaning of the wish. All right, folks, that is a wrap for today. 4.5 out of 10 is what I give this movie. It's not the most terrible movie I have seen all year. Haunted Mansion easily takes that one, although no, maybe the Marvels is in the running for it. Uh, those two films were easily the worst. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, really, really bad as well. This one's not as bad as those, but in terms of does it rise to the occasion of the Disney 100th anniversary, and is it on par with the other Disney animated films? No. This is very poorly animated. It is of low quality. It is mediocre at best, and a 4.5 out of 10 I think is appropriate. It is what it is. The magic is gone from Disney, but there are a few points in this movie, a few places where you might smile. And I think Disney was expecting more. All of this comes under the purview of Bob Iger. It's all on Bobby. Folks, if you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe. When you click it, you stick it on the algorithms, it's the notification bell. Drop a comment down below, let us know your thoughts. Have you seen Wish? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know. And folks, wherever you are, and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun. No, oh, hey, Flong. Mm. What you doing? Thinking about Rome? <laughs> no, I wasn't. But thanks. Now I lost the game. Dang it. Now I lost the game. Oh, no. no. Oh. <laughs> Mm. Well, now, now you're Jerk. a double loser. Oh. <laughs> oh, hey, guys. Game. Yeah. You know what would help you in your grief? Forgetting those things and filling your mind with articles from thatparkplace.com and using that website as a launching pad to get you lost in thought with all of the team from there. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. Yeah. Oh, well, Flora, would you look down here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate you.